My name is Sally Baker, and I'm the host of We Poets. We Poets is a poetry show for boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 13 years old. So if you would like to be on We Poets, please call me at the number listed on the screen. Also, I'm always looking for adult guests to come and tell young people something about his or her job career that they can pursue when they graduate from high school or college. Today, we have a very special guest. He's an attorney, and he's going to tell us all about his career of being an attorney, and maybe you would like to become an attorney when you graduate from high school and college. So without further ado, here we go. Hi, Miguel. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Thank you. Could you tell the boys and girls your name and your title, please? Yes. My name is Miguel Zavala, and my current title is Associate Director of Student Life and Inclusion. Great. I'm so glad you could come and be on We Poets today. Have you been on television before? I've been interviewed and on television, but never uh, in a set like this. Good. Tell us about this time when you were interviewed before. Um, I think I was just uh, at some events and a camera came up to interview me and ask me a couple questions. But a very long, long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. So let's talk about you as an attorney. Yes. Uh, what made you become an attorney? So many things uh, led me to this path of becoming an attorney. Um, the main thing was seeing a lot of injustices when I was younger. Um, my parents were farm workers, so you know they had a low income. So if they had a problem, they kind of just had to experience it. And workplace discrimination went ignored by my parents or wage theft. They didn't want to get in trouble, so they just let everything slide. And as a kid, I thought, that's unfair. I want to have someone that can represent them. Mm -hmm. So one of my goals was to become an attorney and help folks that are marginalized or low income that normally wouldn't seek out help maybe they would feel comfortable with me there to offer them advice. And yeah, that's really one of the main reasons that led me to become an attorney. Good. Do you have siblings? I do. I have two older sisters and an older, older brother. And they inspired me to pursue higher education. Um, without them, I don't think I would be an attorney here today. Um, both my sisters uh, went to college to get their BAs and my brother is currently a welder and they all encouraged me to seek out my goal to go beyond a BA and pursue a higher education and what I tell them uh, is this quote that I constantly share with them that if I can see further it's by standing on the shoulders of giants and to me, they're those giants that have helped me see further and accomplish more than I ever thought I could. And I know your parents are very proud of you. They're incredibly proud. Yes, um, yes. Good, good. Yeah. Now, my next question. What type of, what is a typical day of work like being an attorney? As an attorney, a typical work day involves many things. Uh, I always tell people that as an attorney, any given day or any given week will always be different. But some days have some similarities. The, the main thing is that you're responding to emails. As soon as I walked into the office, uh, turned on my computer, I would look at my email and see who I needed to reply to. If it was a coworker, a client, or opposing counsel. And then uh, another typical day uh, activity is doing research and doing this research to help you strategize for a, for a case and the path that you want to take your strategy. And another thing that's very similar from day in to day out is working with my team and asking them for advice on a particular matter or asking how they would approach a certain case or if they have experience talking with a certain judge or opposing counsel, how they've been able to build some good rapport with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of that uh, happens uh, every day. Now, is your office small or is it large? When I was at this office, it was both small and large. It's a large organization, 
but our teams are small and it feels really like a family. It felt um, really close knit. Mm -hmm. You like being a team worker. I love being a team worker. Mm -hmm. um, I loved my team. I love strategizing. One of my favorite things of being an attorney is that it takes many people to finish a case or to advance the law and move laws forward. Uh, working within your organization or with organizations all over the Bay Area, teamwork is so important. Um, I really do believe that teamwork makes the dream work. It is so true and many cases wouldn't be resolved without working together with a group of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now my next question here, uh, what do you like best about your job? I think the best part about being an attorney is that every day is challenging and every case that you get is different. Every client that you meet is different. Uh, everyone you work with on the other side is also different and it's challenging and very rewarding. When you work on a case for a lot of hours, a lot of days, and then you get the outcome that you wanted and your client is happy, there's no better feeling to know that you made your client happy and they're in a better position than they were when you first met them. It's, it really fills my heart and I still hold all these clients that I worked with very closely in my thoughts and just seeing them happy uh, that their case got resolved always feels great. Do most of your clients come from various ethnic backgrounds? They do. They do. Um, so they're all, they were all from the Bay Area, and they came from all walks of life. Um, the one similarity that many of them had was that they were uh, low-income clients. Um, some of the folks that we worked with uh, were very in vulnerable situations. So those are the folks we worked with. But... They came from different ethnicities, different races, different communities. Um, what were some of the issues like uh, housing or employment or health? Uh, a lot of the time it was uh, housing. Um, you know, the Bay Area has is very large and housing is really important. It's and very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive in the Bay Area. Yes. And housing is a need that so many people in the world need. Yes. You know? Uh, the quiet enjoyment of your space, uh, a roof over your head to to keep the rain away, mm -hmm. and food on the table. Food on the table. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of housing insecurity and concerns uh, affected the Bay Area community. And now, Miguel, could you tell people how they can contact you if they would want to use your services, please? Yes. So my email is miguel.savala at berkeley.edu. Uh, again, it's m-i-g-u-e-l dot z-a-v-a-l-a at berkeley.edu. And if anyone wants to invite me to speak to students, I would love to uh, and tell my story um, because I experienced a lot of hardships and obstacles in becoming an attorney. So would love to share my experience on overcoming them. Great. Well, you've been a wonderful role model. And thank you so much for being on We Poets today. Thank you for having me. I would now like to interview a very special poet. She goes to El Cerrito High School, and this is her first time on TV. I know she's gonna do an excellent job, so let's hear from her. Hi. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing good. Good, I'm so glad you could come and be on We Poets. Mm -hmm. So please, tell us your name, please, and what grade you're in. I'm Rahma Shahid, and 
my Gert and I'm a sophomore at El Cerrito High School. Good. What do you like best about being in high school? Hmm. Well, I get to meet new people and there's a lot more opportunities and so like we poets as such as. So. Good. How did you how did you like uh, not going to class during the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, there were ups and downs. So it, during COVID, I could be less distracted. But when I was um, with, um, oh, that's all right. Um, so it, when when it was quarantine, I could. I was less distracted, but when I was in person, I feel like I could interact with people a lot more, so. You like going to class. Yes, I do. And I like being able to interact with people too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now tell us, uh, you like to write poetry, right? Yes, correct. I'm sure you've written lots of poems. Yes, I have. Have you published any of your poems? No, I haven't. <laughs> but I'm sure you will. Yes. But you're going to read a couple of them for us today, right? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the name of the first one and then read it, please? Um, start with obligation and so it's petty for, of us to endure our envy to make matters more inferior before retreating yet we embellish it until we are proven such a viral trickery is establishing what is happening in the real world a basque it isn't right we should endure to get our way yet the absolute disturbance we should formally do something in progression to overall stop this trickery before it truly messes conditions up. But whom should I question as well? The government, us, in situations things could reverse, have quite a fault in them. So the meaning to this poem is about being right. So when we're arguing about political situations and such, um, there are various ideas and solutions that we could go by, but it, the question is which one is the best? And what I'm going towards is um, a hand-in-hand -hand solution for our community. Good, so, good. And your second one, please. Yeah. I don't have a name for this one yet. That's all right. But Vivid colors of capacity, personalities staging in for the spring breeze flutters to echoes from voices of multicultural references. Petals gathering to stand still over petals of mortality. After one's loss of heart comes a time of new bees hovering over our dear mother nature. Finlets gather upon construct constructing a new root of core. Roots forming colonies of groups miniaturized into people of difference. Steam hot air with cool summer breeze across the ocean sky, steaming with ocean tensions of ocean color sky with green seas comes a new generation. So the meaning behind this song, uh, this poem, is uh, with death comes a new generation and death doesn't need to be as sorrowful as it has to be. And when we're going through these hardships of death and such, we should work as a community to like, help each other out during these hard times. Mm -hmm. And there's so much death in the world today, mm -hmm. isn't there? Yeah. All over the world, mm -hmm, sure. people are dying mm -hmm. and um, it's sad, it's mm -hmm, sad. For sure. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, let me ask you some more things. What are your subjects, favorite subjects in school? Ooh, science. Science, good. I love science. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. what's your second favorite? Uh, second favorite, probably math. Probably, With what? Probably math. Okay, good. Now. Uh, tell us about the ITA Future Tech program that you're involved in. Oh, ITA. So ITA is like a, uh, it's like a technology class where you can learn about a lot about like Photoshop and well, it, it, you get to meet new people as well. And the teacher is great. And so there's uh, you get to learn about Photoshop. You get to learn about animation. And it's quite fun. And you can progress throughout the years of, so first it starts with digital arts and then you can go into robotics and such. So it's a really great opportunity. Good. And what do you hope to uh, do as a career in your future when you graduate from college? Mm, possibly become a scientist or something in maybe the ITA field. Maybe. Good, good, good. Now tell me about some of the other activities at school that you might be involved in. 
Oh, so one of the activities I'm involved in is badminton. I'm in the badminton team. I recently started badminton as a sport. Um, I've never played a team sport, so this is my first time. Oh. So it's it's a new opportunity. I feel like this is like a new chapter to my life because I'm going for singles. You can play with doubles. You can play with multiple people, but I want to go by myself first now. So. Great, great. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Do you like to jog or uh, play tennis or uh, uh, roller skate or ice skate or what? This is probably one of my favorite. Badminton is one of my favorites. Um, badminton is like tennis, but with you use your wrist a lot more. So mm -hmm. you, that's probably one of the key things. And I'm still learning, so I can't wait. Great, great. Now tell us about maybe have you traveled around the world? I have traveled to Pakistan and... I have other, my my family are from like different places of the world, um, like Australia and Canada, but I haven't quite gone there yet. So I see. What countries have you traveled? I went to Pakistan. That's, uh -huh. that's America. What did you like best about Pakistan? Pakistan. Oh, my family, of course. Of course. I mean, all my family's over there. So. How about the food? And the food, of course. The food. Oh my God. Food tastes so good. <laughs> I feel like um, uh, when you eat at home, it's like, uh, or like your um, your own generation of uh, your own culture's food, it just tastes different. Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh -huh. good, good. And I understand you uh, speak several languages? Yes, I do. Okay, I speak like, I'm learning Spanish. I oh. can read Arabic, and I know English, and I know Urdu. Wonderful, wonderful. You could be a tutor for younger children. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> I thought about being a teacher. I thought about it. Good. Do you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have two brothers and I have a sister. Good. Mm -hmm. And uh, are they older or younger? Uh, my my sister is older than me, one year, and my brothers are seven and ten. Oh, good. And what do you do to help take care of them? Um, what do I do? Oh, of course. Um, talk to them a lot, though. Mm -hmm. Help them. Out. Oh, school, of course. Of course. School. Um, getting them ready, of course. Walking to them to school, of course. Good. Maybe they would like to come and be on We Poets oh, and read their poetry. Possibly. Do they like to write? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could encourage them. Maybe. And tell them Miss Baker would like for them to come and be on TV and read their poems too. Yeah, possibly. Um, they they like science and math a lot more. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. Those are good, good uh, But my careers. sister, possibly. Uh-huh. Possibly. Uh -huh. She likes to draw. Oh, yeah. Tell me about mom and dad. What do they do? Ma, mom, uh, she, she, she's an at-home mom, and my dad works at, for technology. Good, mm -hmm. good. So you have some good role models. Mm -hmm, sure. Now, anything else you'd like to tell us about you or the students, some of the things, other things going on at school? Mm, at the moment, uh, I feel like uh, the spring semester has been quite tough. Um, I feel I, I haven't had that many hard classes, but it has been um, with the badminton team and everything. I hope to grow from that. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you doing to keep safe and your students, your uh, fellow students and your parents and the people that you contact every day to keep safe from COVID-19? Oh, I wear a mask, of course. Of course. Of course, wearing a mask. Um, keeping my hand sanitized mm -hmm. and not being too touchy with people. That's right. Social distancing. Social distancing. Yes. Sure. We hope we can find a cure for it soon. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yes. Let's see. Now, are there any other questions? Um, let me see. Uh, anything else you'd like to tell us about you? Hmm. I love learning new things. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, tell me about the headdress that you have on, please. Oh, it's called a hijab. Uh-huh. Yeah. And all women are all uh, required to wear this in it's your in your required. country. You can you can do it if you want to. It's your own choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how about the um, clothing that women are required uh, to wear? You're supposed to wear pretty modest clothing, so mm -hmm. you're usually supposed to cover up your whole body. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the colors black that are recommended? Or? Oh no, no, there's no recommended colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And about what some of the other social issues are? Are women permitted to drive in your your country? Uh, no, you can drive. Oh, good, good. Nothing, uh -huh. nothing wrong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So, anything else you'd like to tell us about you? Mm, let me think. Uh, oh, I do like to draw. Oh, good. That's see, see, 
see a couple of your drawings. Let's see. So, one of these, if you want me to... You can hold it up to the camera there and tell um, us what it is. So, this one is an architecture design drawing that I made. Uh, it was, like, very... It's, it, it was... It was pretty quite a long time ago, but... Mm. Um, this is one of the drawings that I made, and the other one was quite realistic mm -hmm. and drawing that I made. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like um, the, the art that I show, it's like quite diverse and it shows that like, oh, I can do multiple, I can go by multiple things and I love learning new things. So. Good, good. Now when you do your drawings, do you always carry your notebook with you so if you mm -hmm. see something you can sketch it? No, but more like, that's po more like my poetry. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So what, what inspires you then to do these drawings? Uh, I feel like uh, when I have the free time to, I, I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like to be? Uh, do you like to be with a group a lot? Are you a team player, or do you like to be alone more? I could do both. I could do both. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Good. Um, I, yeah, I can do both. Yeah. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Uh huh. So, what are your future plans uh, other than going to college and pursuing uh, your career goal? Uh, what else? Uh, probably learn new things. Probably mm -hmm. one of the best things. Would you like to go to a small college or a larger college? Uh, I don't really mind. I, I could do either. Uh huh. Yep. Would you rather maybe stay here in California where you'd be close to your family or go out of state? I or maybe I, abroad to go to college. <laughs> uh, I, I want to stay here with my family. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of like my mother's child, so I'm quite close to her. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. What do you like best about mom? Oh, a lot of things. <laughs> because mm, I love her so. Yes. What do you like best about dad? <laughs> well, uh, I love him too. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course we love our family. Uh -huh. <laughs> And they're good role models for you. Yeah, they they always support me all the time. Uh -huh. so they're, they're very uh -huh. nice. Good. What do you think you're going to do this summer? What am I going to do? Uh, I have a lot. Uh, maybe go on vacation. Maybe. Oh, where maybe. do you think you'd like to go? Mm, Universal, maybe. Oh. Uh -huh. Universal Studios. That sounds fun. Yes, yes. What else? Mm, mm, not sure what else. Uh -huh. We could go to Turkey, possibly. Oh, that would be fun, too. That would also be fun. Uh -huh. Do you think you'd like to pursue a career in media, like mm. being here in the te television station and being an intern on my I'm program and sure. helping to produce We Poets? Sure. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm really open to any opportunity. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that I'm you're really open-minded. Open-minded. Yes, yeah, exactly. yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, if there's nothing else you'd like to tell me about you, I guess we'll draw our interview to a close, but I want you to go back to school and tell your classmates about We Poets, sure. and I would invite them to come and be a poet like you've been mm -hmm. and read their poetry, or if you know any adults, if your parents know any of any adults who'd like to come and be an adult guest and talk about their careers. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for uh, poets and adult guests to come. Mm -hmm. sure. So I hope you've had a good time on We Poets. You did a wonderful t a job for your first time. Oh, thank you. Yes, and you weren't too nervous at all. Yes, I wasn't. <laughs> the first time I did We Poets, we've done We Poets for 38 years. Oh, my God. And the first show that I did, I was so nervous that I closed the show 10 minutes early. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my God. And so today we haven't done a show for the past two years because of the pandemic. Uh -huh. So uh, everything was new again. So I was just a little bit nervous. So uh, we both did a good job, I think. Yeah. We and did. we have a new green screen and we have new cameras and new equipment. Mm -hmm. And we produce our show at Berkeley Community Media. Mm -hmm. And so it's a wonderful place where people can come and take training mm -hmm. and produce their own show. So if you would like to uh, produce a program here or your parents would like to produce a program here, they could come here and get training and produce their show too. Ooh. So isn't that wonderful? It is. Quite so I want to thank Berkeley Community Media too for uh, letting me do my show here uh, for 38 years. Wow, 38 years. <laughs> 
So if there's nothing else that you'd like to tell us about you, I want to thank you so very much for coming. You did a wonderful job for your first time. And I know all your friends and your classmates are going to enjoy watching you oh when this is Cablecast. Mm -hmm. Yes. So without further ado, then, let's tell our watching audience goodbye. So let's just wave to the camera. Goodbye, everybody, Bye. and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our program. Goodbye. Bye.